Thank you for coming in. I trust you got the script. So if you're ready, just react to my line. Ready? Okay. Rolling. You think you can run my kitchen? And where are you from? Bakersfield? Fresno. And cut. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you for joining us in our daily practice of yoga and meditation broadcast live on the internet. As you know, my name is Patrick and I will be your guide as we scurry away from our daily problems, our frustrations, our worries into happiness. I want to apologize today for being a couple minutes late as I wanted to engage my heart and that led me to walking barefoot in my garden. Spoiler warning, it worked. Our practice today will not only engage your mind, your body, your soul and your heart it should put a smile on your face, breathing the fresh air high above the clouds and ending in a child's pose savasana. So, let's start. Legs spread shoulder width apart. And with a deep breath, I'm sorry, I forgot to turn off my phone. Okay, there we go. Sorry. And where were we? Deep breath. Um, whoever's calling me right now, please let me call you back later as I'm involved in a class. Hands over heart. Sorry, one second. Hands over heart. Hey, honey. Um, hi. Yeah, I'm in a class right now. Um, I thought you'd be watching, actually, online. Um, can I call you back late? What's important? Um, hold on for a second. Deep breaths and stretch downward. What is working out? Excuse me? Bend down with your knees fully bent and engage your core. What are you talking about? Can't we talk about this when you get home? And feel yourself lift away from the earth. And stretch. And what do you mean you're not coming home? Why? I don't know. Who, who's Cameron? I don't know a Cameron. You met a Cameron. And... Oh, um... um and stretch, pull your body, feel your hip flex. Uh, Cameron, I don't know Cameron. We hit it off right from the beginning. What does this Cameron have that I don't? What about his hair? What's wrong with my hair? And to the other side. What's wrong with my hair? It's not out of control. It's not unruly. It's fine. Hold, hold on, hold one, one second. Hold on for a second. Okay, there. See, I'm clean shaven. Clean shaven. Smooth like a baby's rump. What do you mean you didn't mean facial hair? Oh, my. That okay. I'll hold on. Um. 
Two jumping jacks. Okay, give me a second, give me a second. Jump. There, there, see, I cut my hair. I cut my hair for you. Engage your, engage your core, everybody. Engage your core. Feel the strength. Look what I gave up for you. I was halfway to a man bun. Do you know what successful yogis have? Man buns! What do you mean I look like a chia pet? Not committed. I started this show late because I was at CVS picking up your birth control. How is that not the definition of commitment? Oh, and for your future birth control needs, do not expect me to cut anything else off. Warrior pose, everybody. Warrior pose. Feel the balance. The balance. Leave my mother out of this. Fine. 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 Then all your stuff will be waiting for you on the curb, which I will carry out myself with bended knee and slow steps not to overstrain my body. You picked the wrong yogi. So I guess this will conclude our practice today. Remember to breathe because if you don't breathe, you'll choke and suffocate. I am the newly single Patrick, and I want to thank you all for joining us, and I will be back tomorrow, I guess, because I have nothing else to do. But until then, um, namaste. So, shall I share some more photos with you that I've taken recently? This first photo was taken at a Chinese restaurant up in the Bay Area. Um, make sure you always try the Fuking fried rice, but just make sure you don't get any of the cream sauce. Now, this I ordered I'm still not 100% sure what exactly it is. And I think it's still in my colon. I have no idea what this is. Now this I saw on the internet. It's called a flirty apron. For $20 you can wear a full length apron called the flirty apron. Make sure you always request that you get the thong petticoat. Now this I saw recently over at one of those overpriced expensive markets enough for you to have ghost farts. And finally, they have these Dodger peanuts, which I personally would never buy, because they're too much like the team. One, they're overpriced. Two, they're not very fulfilling. And three, come October, they become a choking hazard. So that's our show for another week. Before I go, I wanted to just mention real quickly there have been a lot of passings lately in the entertainment field. It started a couple weeks ago with Peter Mayhew, as I mentioned in the last episode, and in the last few days, uh, Peggy Lipton. Yesterday was Doris Day, and um, I slept in today. And I woke up finding out that Tim Conway had passed away at 85. This one is a little bit painful because he was always an inspiration and a hero. For the younger ones here who are watching who don't know who Tim Conway was, he was on TV shows like McHale's Navy. He was on movies, a whole bunch of Disney ones during the 70s like World's Greatest Athlete, Gus, The Shaggy DA, The Apple Dumpling Gang. But he's most known for being on The Carol Burnett Show. They were stars when they were doing their little sketches, but he referred to refer to call himself an ensemble member because they all were equal. And they were hysterical. I was born during the middle of the run of the show, but I've seen lots of the episodes. 
One of the things about the show was it was filmed on Fridays. They would have two different audiences, one at 5 and one at 8. The 5 o'clock show got to see the complete show filmed in its entirety as it says on the book. The 8 o'clock show, the idea was in case they missed anything, they didn't want the audience to already know where the jokes were coming so they could have a fresh laugh. But most of the time they didn't even need to do that because the show was done. So it was called the screw Ground Show. A lot of the people there, especially Tim, who had improv experience, would screw around and just do the show and sometimes improvise off the lines and make even a funnier line and normally those were actually the ones that were used versus the safe show. Well, if you want to know what an improvised scene on the Carol Burnett show looks like, go on YouTube. Look up Tim Conway, the family, or Tim Conway, the dentist. Both of those are two of the funniest scenes you're ever going to see, and they hold up very well. And Harvey Corman didn't even know that Tim Connery was going to improvise, which made it even that much more hysterical. And you can see a lot of people cracking up laughing, including the actors on the screen. I had a chance to meet him about 15 years ago, and Mr. Conway could not have been nicer. I was an extra on a TV show called On The Spot. It was half sitcom, half improvised TV show. It starred Jeff Davis, Aaron Hayes, Mindy Sterling, Arden Marine, Jordan Black, a whole bunch of who's who in the improv community. And it had as a recurring character, Tim Conway. He was the boss. He always had big office scenes and um, they had him sit behind a desk and they would always focus the cameras on the big desk and seeing how this little man was always barking orders. But he was improvising still. And during one of the rehearsal days, I was sitting in the stands just waiting and he, there were normally like 15 maybe camera people that normally gather around the set around to block where the cameras are going to be during the scene when they actually shoot. And uh, there were 40, 50 people pressed in really tightly against the cameras so they can all watch. Everybody from the crew, they all wanted to watch Tim Conway improvise a scene. They were in awe, enamored of the genius of this man. And I realized what Mr. Conway was doing at that time. He was trying different variations to see what was hitting and what was not, what was funny, what wasn't. And he would use the funny things and he would discard the bad things. But he never got to try anything else because everything he said was hysterical. Everything. And it all worked. You could see that on the Carol Burnett show. And I could only wish to have a career like him. The man was a genius. The man was amazing. So, um, to quote another comedian, Greg Proops, Mr. Conway, thank you for your talent. And I hope your soul is resting amongst the celestial stars and giving us all a chance to enjoy laughter and inspire us to do so. Thank you, Mr. Conway, sir, and um, thank you guys from Hollywood. That's a wrap.